examples of um, determining eccentric and concentric contractions. So these are some questions to help you. And there's two perspectives that you can take, one from kind of the internal torque and one from the external torque. So the first is from the internal torque. So the first question you ask uh, is what is the joint motion? And it's not flexion and extension. It's either flexion or extension, or it's internal or external rotation. So you're just looking at one phase of the movement or the exercise, okay? So during the motion, you decide, are you opposing or controlling gravity? Are you lifting a weight or are you setting it down in a controlled manner? And then based on that question, number two, you determine the type of contraction. If you decide you're opposing gravity, it is always a concentric contraction. If you are controlling gravity in the, the movement, it is always an eccentric contraction. And then to determine which muscles are involved, you go, if it's a concentric contraction, it's the agonist to the joint motion. So you go back up to question number one. And for an eccentric contraction, it's the antagonist muscles to the joint motion. So let's look at an example. First, I wanna just say, here's an, uh, an example of an isometric, no joint motion, right? So your torso, it's a load acting at a moment arm, it's creating a flexor torque at your hip, and the that's the external torque, and the internal torque is from your hip extensor muscles, creating that uh, hip extensor torque. All right, but let's go to some motion. So I'm asking you to look from position one to position two, and we're focusing on the hip joint. So what is the hip joint motion from one to two? So you're in a flex position here and you extend. So from position one to position two, you have extended or you've done extension. During that motion, are you opposing or controlling gravity? And if you just kind of feel this motion, imagine you're doing this exercise, you are lifting your torso away from the ground. So you are opposing gravity. Once we know we're opposing gravity, it is always a concentric contraction. Once we know it's a concentric contraction, we try to figure out what muscles are involved. And the definition is if it's a concentric contraction, it's the agonist to the joint motion. Our joint motion was extension. The muscles that generate a hip extensor torque are the gluteus maximus and the hamstring muscle group. All right, so let's look at position one to position two, the other side of this exercise. So you've gone from an extended position to flexed. So from position one to position two, your hip is flexing. During the motion, are you opposing or controlling gravity? Now you're lowering your body weight. So you are controlling gravity. Controlling gravity is always an eccentric contraction. And then eccentric, you would be using the antagonist muscles to the joint motion. So the joint motion is hip flexion from position one to position two. The antagonist of the hip flexors are the hip extensors. So we're using the gluteus maximus and the hamstrings. And note for, for the two examples, for this entire exercise, it is using the hip extensor muscles, gluteus maximus and hamstrings, either in a concentric contraction or an eccentric contraction.